don't know what goes into ETCS. Well, one of the key factors is automatic train protection. But ATP, or automatic train protection, is nothing new. It's been around a long time. There are many national systems that provide different levels of ATP. However, in most instances, it's not intended to be the prime information source for the driver. Line side signals or other information is used. There are some systems, though, where the driver does get the information from an ATP system. TVM is a good example. ATP also normally sits in the background. It sits there watching for the driver to make a significant enough mistake for it to intervene. Sometimes information is displayed, but as I say, it's not always the prime information. It may just be to guide the driver. So with our transmission of ATP information, we have a choice. We can send it intermittently or continuously. Many systems are like ETCS level one, which we've already talked about. The information is configured by the signaling system and then messages are transmitted from discrete devices mounted in the track. This gives you an intermittent transmission and information is stored until it is updated. There are systems that do use continuous communication. Data can be transmitted through the rails, or, of course, you can use loops to give a wider area of coverage for the transmission devices. So the systems that are around also can supervise the train continuously or just intermittently. Some systems do continuously monitor the speed. They're checking the speed against the limits and confirming that there is a braking distance to a stop or speed reduction. The aim here is to avoid going past the red signal at danger or the danger point uh, by intervening before the train gets to it. However, there are other systems which only react when the next section is entered or a significant speed is exceeded. And that can be either for detecting that the section ahead has been erroneously entered or that the speed is above that for the section. So TVM is a good example where the driver is advised of the speed to be applied at the entry to the next section. And that can include, of course, it being zero and passing into that new section at above that speed will cause an intervention. So what does ETCS provide in terms of ATP functionality? Well, ETCS provides continuous supervision of the speed and distance to travel. It does advise the driver of the limits. It warns them when they're getting close to exceed them. That is a useful feature for the driver. For level one, we know that it uses intermittent transmission based on valise groups or loops. However, for levels two, three, and the future R, there is continuous transmission available, and it also can become the prime source of information for the driver. So what does ATP functionality need? Well, it needs information about the track, it needs to know the speed profile and the gradient. It needs to know how far the train is authorized to travel. But it also needs to know the braking characteristics of the train in order to work out where a train should be starting to reduce speed for a speed reduction or a stopping point. It needs to know whether the train is a passenger train with good brakes or a freight train with not so good brakes. And at all times, it needs to know the location and speed of the train. And in the next bite, we're going to be having a look at how ETCS locations are determined.